I'm Jeff Houston. I'm the Chief Scientist at APNIC, the Registry in the Asia Pacific. And this afternoon I'd like to talk about what I talked about actually this last few weeks at both the right meetings and at other networking operational meetings. This is all actually about engineering of protocols. And you think, well, this is easy. We've done the internet for years. But right up until very recently, we've only ever had to deal with one protocol. Even though we developed v6, almost everything was done just in IPv4. And a lot of assumptions tend to intrude. When you try and make a connection, you send a packet. And hopefully the packet comes back and you know, you're know you singing and dancing. But what happens when you don't get a response? Now, most protocols go, hang on, if I don't get one packet back, maybe if I try again, and these are computers, so that's easy, or again, or again. And we actually set that up in the protocol stack so that if you're running almost anything that's called Windows, in just a one protocol world, you'll send three packets and wait for 19 seconds before going, it's just not there. And you go, well, that's a long time. But the issue was there was no alternative. You either connected to that address or nothing. 19 seconds. Oh, some folk did a lot better than that. FreeBSD, which is what Macs use these days, 75 seconds. That's a minute and a quarter. And Linux, which was the most persistent, tried and tried and tried for 189 seconds. Nobody waits for 189 seconds. But when there was no plan B, that was okay. But now think about this dual protocol world that we're building right now. And now the URL, Google, whatever, has two addresses, one in each protocol. What do you do then? Well, the first thing we did was incredibly lazy. We tried V6. And if it didn't work, we moved to V4. But didn't work covers a multitude of sins that take between 19 and 189 seconds. And what we were seeing was that any user that turned on V6, if V6 wasn't quite working properly, their experience was abysmal. It just wasn't actually worth being connected. If every time to download a web page took three minutes of white screen silence, something bad is just happening. And we actually realized this is a really difficult problem in terms of promoting V6. I'm like, if turning on V6 makes the experience unworkably slow, no one turns it on. So in the last year or so, we started thinking about this and going, hang on a second, these are computers. They're really good at doing things in parallel. Unlike men who only do things one at a time, you know, computers are better than that. They can actually do two things at once and not forget one or the other. And we actually came up with a different way of doing it, which exploits the power of actually having two protocols. Because these days, what goes on in the most recent implementations of browsers and other applications that support dual stack is that you first do that query from the name to the address. And if you get back two addresses, you actually send out queries in both protocols at the same time. And whichever is the faster, you lock into and use. That's a massive change from two protocols being abysmally slow to a new model where two protocols is the faster of the two. And you'd think problem solved, but no. This is a very complex world that we've built. And there's a lot of everything is connected to everything else. And that kind of simple engineering, pick the fastest, is not always the best engineering. Because the other part of the problem that we've managed to produce is that it's not quite two equivalent protocols. You might have noticed we've just run out of addresses in v4. And these days, to cope with that address exhaustion, providers are putting up carrier grade NATs. They're putting up translation units to try and share that critical public v4 address across multiple clients. How do you know when to share? Well, interestingly, it's that first connection packet. It's that first packet in V4 that goes, oh, that customer 
wants a little bit of public address. So how big should these CGNs be? How much pressure are they going to be under? Well, interestingly, that's the number of connection attempts. So let me go back to our dual protocol browser. If for every time you go somewhere that's dual snagged, you send out both a v4 and a v6 packet, the load on that carrier grade NAT is as big as if you weren't doing v6 at all. That's disastrous. Because the one thing we'd hoped was that as more service providers enabled their content in v6, browsers would naturally migrate to use it and relieve the pressure on these carrier grade NATs. We wouldn't have to make phenomenally difficult and expensive and complex NATs. So we're after something a little more in the browsers of tomorrow. We'd like to handicap the race. And what we'd really like to do is that don't send out both packets at the same time. Give the V6 packet just a little breathing room and oddly enough we'll have done the world a phenomenal favour and that then two protocols will be faster than one and at the same time the carrier grade NATs won't be placed under amazingly high pressure. We would have saved a little bit of the world and that's a good thing. Thank you.